the Canadian Pacific CP Rail owns the land right now in which the 33 acres will be redeveloped. And I keep on referring to 53 acres. 33 acres is uh, CP lands, and they're moving their intermodal facility out to the new global transportation hub in Regina. So that's, uh, that frees up that land. 20 acres, the other 20 acres is where Mosaic Stadium sits now. And uh, that's all going to be uh, redeveloped as well. So 53 acres, CP uh, will move their container yards next year. They'll be into their new facility. So uh, I would suggest you by either the fall of 2012, depending on how quickly CP moves, to the uh, spring of 2013, construction will begin. With an estimated completion date of? Uh, our goal is to have it ready for, for the 2016, uh, the year 2016. And I don't even, you know, chances are the first event that's going to happen in this won't even be a football game. It'll, it'll, it'll be other events that will take place first. So to, con to allay the concerns of football fans, um, there have been, you know, examples of stadiums that were not built, um, obviously with football first. I mean, the most famous example being the Sky Dome in Toronto, which is not one of the best places to watch a football game. Will it be – will Riders fans still be able to watch a good football game, even though this is not being primarily built as a stadium? It, there's no question that, first of all, uh, it's important to note that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are, are, are definitely a partner uh, in this uh, in the entertainment facility. Uh, we need to ensure um, that we we first of all build a facility that is going to meet the needs of not only uh, today's football team but football teams years from now. Um, number two, it has to be a fantastic fan experience. That can't change. We can't change what we have today in regards to the ambiance and, and what the fan experience is. What we can change, though, is a much better experience when they go use the washrooms and when they go to our food concessions. Um, I mean, those are all amenities that we need to improve, but there's no question that uh, the, the build of the facility will ensure that uh, that the fans continue to, to enjoy that that, uh, that great uh, experience that Mosaic has. Just in the newer... Uh, in a newer facility that um, is, is, again, going to be built that, to, to accommodate other, uh, other uh, events. But we certainly don't want to have a facility where the fans are, are sitting, you know, 40 feet back is the closest set of seats. That's not going to happen. Right, or conversely, way too close, which is the Rogers Center experience with being set up. You couldn't see over the players. Yeah, well, there's, 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 there's yeah, I think this day and age, We'll be able to put together a. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll go on. I'll, I am pretty sure that we will build a state-of-the-art facility here that is going to be the envy of uh, of uh, all uh, sports teams and uh, the entertainment industry in all of Canada. So, have you? Ha do you have any private stakeholder commitments so far? Or are you still waiting for that August first um, report to cancel? Well, I can tell you that we've had a number. I mean, the the, the development industry well, wants their hands on this. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the the challenge for us, of course, is that uh, because the city we're going to own the land, we're buying the land from CP, um, and because there's going to be some public dollar, dollars, uh, both provincially and uh, municipally, that this has to be very much a, an, an open, transparent process. So we'll issue the RFPs. And uh, we'll look at what comes uh, to us uh, that are that are interested based on the criteria that we'll set. Now, sometimes people get confused with, you know, um, the private sector um, developing the facility, and then of course you've got the other side, and that is their sponsorship, because there's going to be many components to the facility. So, sponsorship is one is one piece of it, but really, where where the key the key um, to this is going to be getting that right developer that's going to be able to, to put together the uh, project uh, in a manner that uh, that meets everybody's needs and in which they're going to also get a return on their investment. Right, and then obviously there will also quite possibly be naming rights, I assume? Uh, again, that's the sponsorship side. So there's no question that a huge opportunity for the naming rights. There's also the concessions. Uh, that go along with it. There's also going to be many other components to it. As I said, this is, I mean, it'll be the new home to the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame, uh, as an example. So there's uh, going to be retail opportunities, hotel, uh, office space. 
So the list goes on and on. As I said, when we talk about multifunctional, um, that's exactly what we uh, what we mean. And you know, the beauty of what what has happened here is it's certainly allowed those that want to get into the game. Uh, they've certainly become very creative with drawings that they've provided and showed us already, even without the RFPs going out there. And um, obviously accessible by transit and uh, parking available. Well, you know, you make a really good point there. The beauty of the beauty of where this land is is right in the heart of the city. It is uh, right across the street from where Mosaic Stadium currently uh, exists. Uh, it, it is it is sandwiched between our warehouse district slash entertainment district, uh, and on the other side is the uh, our downtown. We will have pedways that will bring people into the downtown from the entertainment facility and vice versa. And of course, the uh, entertainment district is, is right there uh, already. Uh, major transit routes uh, in the entire area. Uh, like we do today, we encourage whenever we have major events at Mosaic Stadium, uh, we uh, offer uh, public transit. Uh, and of course, we ask people to park in, in, in the suburbs and uh, rather than bring their cars in, they get on the bus and it just makes it more convenient for everybody. And uh, there'll be plenty, uh, there'll be more than enough parking to accommodate everybody's needs. So I think you've answered all of the questions. Are there <laughs> anything else you want to mention about this entertainment facility? You know, it, it's really exciting. And, and again, it's, it's part of, again, the 53-acre 53, uh, 53 development. The, by the way, the, this 53-acre redevelopment is the largest inner-city redevelopment that we've ever seen, not only in Regina, but in Saskatchewan. So we're, we're really excited about it. And if you get a chance... Um, uh, go on YouTube, Jen. I don't know if you've had the chance yet, or maybe Mark talked to you about this, but if you get a chance to really uh, get appreciation for this, and you could actually have it linked uh, to your site, go ahead and uh, key in Regina Revitalization. Okay. And uh, you, will see the, you will see the concept of what we're uh, putting together. This is about commercial redevelopment. This is about industrial redevelopment because, you know, really there's light industrial on that land now that's going to be moved out of there. And will truly be, allow us to have that part of the city what it should be, and that is um, uh, entertainment, uh, residential, commercial. Um, we're, we're, we're quite excited about it. So it sounds like there's a lot for uh, football fans and non-football fans in Regina to look forward to. It's huge, absolutely huge. And hopefully we'll drive up some tourism. Well, there's no question that it, that's going it, it will be a draw in that regard with, obviously, the, the SAS Sports Hall of Fame, and, and, and uh, there's no question that's going to be an additional draw, you know, seven days a week, 12, 12 months of the year. There's going to be other parts of the facility. As I said, we're looking at really uh, uh, creating a center of excellence for amateur sport. Um, you know, right, you know, maybe six blocks away, we already kind of have a center of excellence for, for winter sport with our with the new facilities there. This just, just adds to what we're attempting to do in, in, in respect to building not only a sports corridor, but an entertainment corridor. It really fits in nicely with the overall plan of, uh, plan of our city. So 2015-2016, uh, CFL fans should be planning on taking in a road game in Regina. No question about it. No question about it. Thank you. You're very welcome. We may check in with you again in a year or so and see where this project's going. Absolutely. Well, actually, August 1st is when uh, we'll be reporting back to council on uh, what the next steps are, so that'd be oh. great. So, yeah, we'll maybe talk to you like early in the fall and we'll find out what's going on. Anytime, Jen, that'd be great. Thank you so much. And if much. you have any questions, if you also have any questions, don't hesitate to call our office. Call okay. you Regina fans. Go, there you go. All fans in Saskatchewan, you can call the office. This has been Jen speaking with Regina Mayor Fiacco for RougeRadio.com.